So, uh, welcome again to Bodhicaya Vodhara. Uh, we are now uh, at stanza 102. I think last time I made uh, uh, some mistake saying that it was 803 or something like that. I was wrong. Uh, the uh, we we finished uh, mindful of mindfulness of uh, feeling at the end of uh, stanza number one hundred and one, uh, where we say this aggregate deprive of self. What damage therefore can sensation do to it? This aggregate deprive of self. Now we come to the third mindfulness, the mindfulness of the mind. I think I already told this, but uh, you know, this is talking about Vipassana. And Vipassana is um, the meditation uh, that gives you insight, uh, that sees the nature of everything, nature of the um, entities or the um, phenomena. So there, um, of course, there are uh, two ways. Uh, what we call the analytical meditation and. Um, non-analytical meditation. Uh, but uh, this, um, and of course, you know, usually that meditation is um, uh, integration or combination of samatha and vipassana. And uh, non-analytical vipassana meditation is also there and it's important. But in this text, we are mostly dealing with the analytical. Uh, because as I said before, uh, the Shantideva's Bodhichaya Avatara uh, is uh, very special. Uh, like many uh, treatises, um, composed by Nagarjuna and his students, it's very much based on uh, analysis, on logic, on um, um, on uh, you know kind of uh, making. Uh, analysis and uh, inter, you know kind of uh, searching asking questions and finding out uh, how things how things should be or how things are so therefore the whole uh, book of Bodhijaya um, Avatasdara is more based on this kind of reasoning, uh, rather than just quoting uh, the sutras or quoting what the Buddha said, and that we have to accept that. Uh, so therefore, there's lots of analysis, there's lots of asking questions, there are lots of reasoning. And this is basically, you know, this Nananda University's uh, special approach that um, you don't reject any teaching of the Buddha, you know, uh, fully accept all the teachings of the Buddha. But uh, they are, you know, all of them are useful, all of them are meant to help some people, you know. But uh, whether 
the you know a particular thing that Buddha said. Is it ultimately true or not? That's something that we have to we have to analyze. We have to find out. Everything that the Buddha says does not need to be ultimately true, because he says lots of things which are uh, very important uh, for some people, because that helps them and they need that instruction or explanation and it will eventually lead them to ultimate truth or realization of ultimate truth but they may not exactly be the ultimate truth and that's why you know this um, this um, uh, system of um, you know, Ngedun and Tangdun. You know, Ngedun is definitely true, a definitive meaning, and Tangdun is, you know, um, that's leading to that. You know, it may not be definitively true, it may not be ultimately true, but it will be helpful. So, this for. So, therefore, you know, now, this for mindfulness is, as we talked about, more analytical. Uh, now we come to 102, stanza number 102, uh, where we talk about the nature of mind and uh, mindfulness of the mind. Uh, it has kind of two sections one is about the mind and one is about the the sense sensual consciousnesses you know these say five senses uh, so the first is this uh, two stanzas 102 and 103 the mind within the senses does not dwell it has no place in outer things like form, and in between the mind does not abide. Not out, not in, not elsewhere can the mind be found. It's not in the body, yet it's nowhere else. It does not merge with it, nor stand apart. Something such as this does not exist, not even slightly. Beings by their nature are beyond the reach of suffering. I think this too. Uh, the mind, maybe I'll just read the uh, Tibetan first, because uh, that makes me, uh, because it's, both the texts are in the same laptop, so therefore I have to go uh, for, you know, forward and backward and that sometimes makes me confused. Yin on lamin ni zusu lamin panawan and no now semen shimin shi yen yo yon the ye my koji lumen yen the men demon luso garme pa ten the chosen mantis sejero yen yang yen 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 So the uh, the mind, what we call mind, where is the mind? Uh, is the mind in uh, the eyes or ear or eye sensation or ear sensation or you know uh, or body, you know, or tongue or nose? Uh, you can't say that it is there. Uh, and then, does it uh, does it exist in you know the form and you know uh, sound and you know uh, all these things like smell and this the object of these five senses, you know. So mind is a consciousness. Mind is an awareness, 
but uh, you can't say that they are in the sense in the sense organs or sense uh, or it is in the sense objects uh, because you know even if you have the sense organs the the the, the awareness or the uh, mental uh, consciousness uh, doesn't arise uh, sometimes even if there are sense objects the consciousness doesn't arise so it doesn't it is neither of them uh, and if you want to find out whether the the mind is in between the sense you know organs and sense objects uh, you can't say that they are there too uh, and then it can't be anywhere else and if you look as, as we have discussed this before so that's why it's not elaborately discussed here uh, it doesn't seem to uh, be in the inside your body uh, and it is not the mind is not outside the body uh, it's not the body itself it's not something outside or other than the body uh, it is not something that's mixed up or kind of uh, you know integrated uh, with the mind and it's not something you know separated from the mind also uh, so therefore uh, if we if we uh, try to uh, search try to find uh, where is the mind you know where does the mind exist um, we can't find anywhere we cannot find exactly how the mind is also in what way because the mind doesn't have a form uh, mind doesn't have um, you know um a kind of um, a permanent or you know uh, place where it resides uh, mind doesn't you know nobody can see the mind nobody have seen the mind nobody you know there's nothing you can hold on to that this is the mind and this is here and this exists in this way this it's this big this small you know it travels this this far or this near or you know anything so therefore you know um, the nature of the mind uh, is something that uh, it doesn't have any form it cannot be shown it cannot be obstructed by anything there's not no obstructions it does not reside anywhere it doesn't have any appearances uh, no kind of uh, uh, um, no formation of any kind and no kind of existence of anything and as it is said you know this is a, a sutra um, that uh, uh, Uesung, he said the buddha said to the uh, to the uh, kashapa kashapa uh, the mind uh, is not has not, never been seen by the buddhas and does not have never been seen by the buddhas in the past 
has is not being seen by the Buddhas now and will never be seen by the Buddhas in the future also. Uh, so therefore it's naturally, you know, it cannot be touched by, it cannot be touched by sensations or it cannot be touched by, uh, by sufferings or pain or, you know, it is not something in its nature which cannot be a trapped. So if our mind is kind of, uh, uh, if our mind is um, um, trapped in samsara, uh, it's not that it's really trapped in samsara, because mind itself, it doesn't have any existence of this kind. It just, you know, what Buddha said, it's just an uh, salva, in a, it's a luminosity, it's a clarity. So therefore it cannot be trapped, but what is trapped is our um, wrong way of um, our own imputation of how it is. Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, like we actually uh, discussed uh, then the self, you know, because self is basically the mind. So it applies to this also and so therefore, of course that is part of the selflessness of the self, is actually part of the selflessness of the phenomena. So the mind is so therefore, mm, you know, um, it's not something that is existing on its own. It is, um, it is just awareness. It is un, um, what can it, trappable. It is, its nature is not, you know, it cannot be, cannot really be. Uh, you know, uh, defiled by anything, mm, because its nature is just awareness and nothing else. Uh, so all this defilement and all this, uh, you know, uh, samsaric experiences we have, is just a misunderstanding that uh, our wrong perception. Uh, so the second is uh, that our this five consciousness, you know, five consciousness, um, our, that they they do not actually, you know, uh, we think that this because of the five consciousness, then we say this mind. But um, if you look at the five consciousness. Uh, Maybe I'll just leave it here this time. Um, 102 and 103, I think that's better. Uh, so I think I've read both uh, the English and Tibetan, uh, but uh, uh, I can just... Uh, Uh, this is talking about uh, the the mind is uh, uh, you know kind of not a, not is emptiness of the mind. Mind is the nature of the emptiness. The nature of the mind is doesn't have any you know true existence. Uh, so. Uh, so that's, I think we, I read both English and Tibetan, so I uh, stop here, and this is 102 and 103. And then uh, next uh, we talk about the mind, you know, 
uh, is not born or not arisen. You know, uh, we talk about you know uh, everything is like seva mepa, kapa mepa, you know, nepa mepa. It doesn't arise. It doesn't uh, exist. It doesn't. Uh, you know, it has no uh, true. You know, arising or birth, no true existence and no true, you know, dissol dissolution. You know, it. Uh, so this is we talk about next time. Uh, so hundred and three. Thank you.